you're in this coffee shop, right? Yep. And exactly what happened? So I was sitting with my friend. We were just kind of like getting some work done, having a conversation, working on our laptops. And a what looked like a normal white guy walked past us. And he just very loudly said, there's another Holocaust coming for you Jews. I often say there are keyboard bullies. And there are people that will say things anonymously on a, on a keyboard that wouldn't say something to you in an elevator or in a hallway or something. And when it escalates to the point that they are saying something to you in person, in a coffee shop, walking past you, then that's an escalation. It, it's gone to the point that they're not just keyboard bullies. They're now confronting you. So they're, they are taking it to the next level. You say that your kids are, are both Jewish and black and that they have to worry about this hate. What do you say to them about this? Do you, do you talk to them about it? I, I There's assume no you choice. Do. I mean, they, they have ghetto names, Aviva and Toba, so <laughs> <laughs> that, that starts it. Jewish ghetto, but ghetto. And right away, you're different. Right away, your mother looks different. You know, you have to tell them, you have to teach people. Jews are like black people. We come in a rainbow of colors. You can never tell. You don't look Jewish. Do I look Jewish? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Until you get to Israel and you see there's such a wonderful array of colors of, of, of people that are Jews that, that, that manage to get along somehow without looking at you and assuming and saying, oh, this happened to you. And I'm sorry it happened to you. But of course, you look Jewish, I guess, per se, where people think they can say things to me and I don't look. And so that's where that comes in, that problematic situation. Absolutely. What do you say to yourself about why this is happening? Anti-Semitism, because people have always hated Jews. What's wrong? I mean, that's well, how I feel about it. I think people you, have always... How do you explain that to yourself? Well, you know, when I was looking at... I was listening to what Kanye was saying and I was listening about the jealousy part of it. And he was saying, you know, Jews take care of each other and that black people we don't. Well, you know, then stop doing crabs in a barrel and everybody join in and help if you see that this is what solidifies the Jewish community. Pay attention, go along with it. But when he starts preaching this hate, he has children who are going to take this in and you don't want that. You don't want another generation of people saying, hey, hi, how you doing? You don't need this anymore. It's done, it's over, it's bad. And we have to pull it together for this country. For all of us, I don't care if you call them Yahweh, Jehovah, whatever. There's only one being, and we have to stop the hate. John, why do you think this is happening? Why do you think people put their energy into this? I mean, it's the oldest of hates. What Kanye tweeted was a direct line to the same language they were using in World War II against Jews, to the pogroms in Europe, to the Spanish Inquisition. It's just a new flavor. It's the greatest of scapegoats, Jews. They're, they're behind everything. Everything. <laughs> and the, the problem is we, we don't, we tend to think it's just these words. It's like, oh, they're just saying crazy things. At the end of the day, you get shot at, great. Uh, but we forget at the end of these words, at the very end, are dead Jews.